now has dueling bills dealing with the state's law banning abortions. Republicans want to keep the law in place, but add exceptions for rape and incest. Democrats want to get rid of the law altogether. The Democrats introduced their bill this week. It would repeal the 1849 abortion ban that went back into effect after Roe v. Wade was overturned. The Democrats say there is overwhelming support for abortion rights, pointing to data from a Marquette Law School poll that showed more than 60% of Wisconsinites opposed the decision to overturn Roe v. Wade. Every single Wisconsinite should have the right to make their own reproductive health care decisions without the interference of politicians who know nothing about their faith, their family, or their circumstances. Assembly Speaker Robin Voss says the Democratic bill has no chance of passing. He says the Republican bill is the middle ground. I think most Republicans, and I hope most Democrats and independents, agree that we need to update the definition of health of the mother. Uh, and I think that we have, we know that in the public, 90% uh, of the public supports adding exceptions, even the vast majority of Republicans. So it seems like the only when the Republican bill came out earlier this month, Governor Evers said he would not sign a bill that leaves Wisconsin women with fewer rights and freedoms than they had before the U.S. Supreme Court overturned Roe. Evers is supporting the Democratic bill co-authored by Representative Lisa Subek. Joining me now on the show is Representative Lisa Subex. First up, thanks so much for joining us here. Yes, thank you for having me. All right, so we're going to start by talking about the resignation of Doug LaFollette just a couple months into his term. Obviously, the Republicans have issued a joint resolution asking for a special election. Do you think that's appropriate? Sure. So, you know, I think it's up to the governor to make this decision. The process that's outlined in our statutes gives him the option of appointing somebody to the position. It gives him the option of calling a special election. And he is being fairly consistent with what he's done in the past. He um, appointed Carolyn Stanford Taylor to replace him when he vacated the um, DPI superintendent space to become governor. And he's following the exact same process he did then. So the question from the Republican side has been, did anyone have any idea that this was going to happen, that Doug LaFollette was going to resign a couple months into his tenure? Do you know of anything on the Democratic side of anyone knowing that this was going to happen, that Doug LaFollette would step aside this quickly? Well, certainly Doug LaFollette and I don't talk regularly. <laughs> um, you know, I don't, I don't know what his plans were. I had, I had not heard anything from him. Typically, if I see or speak to Doug LaFollette, it was very much in his official capacity. I don't know of anybody knowing his plans. Um, certainly, having watched him throughout the election cycle, I would say I thought he was all in, and certainly life changes, especially, you know, when you've been in office for a very long time. I think sometimes life changes, and it seems Doug decided to go in a different direction. Sarah Godlewski, obviously the former treasurer, do you feel like that's an appropriate transition over into that role, something that she'll be able to handle based off her experience? Sure. So I think Sarah Godlewski is uniquely qualified because she was state treasurer. She hits the ground running, ready to walk in on day one and take the reins as secretary of state. There are some boards and things that both positions sit on, things that they have in common, particularly as it relates to the board on public lands. And I think that I can think of few people who are as well qualified as Sarah Godlewski for this. Wanted to shift gears a little bit. Abortion was obviously a big topic of conversation the past two weeks. Now, Republicans have made their pitch now a week ago, which was to add some exceptions for rape and incest. Are you willing to consider anything that is not a full repeal of the abortion ban in place? So this week we introduced the Restore Row Act which would restore our freedom, my freedom and others' freedom, to make our own reproductive health care decisions and to make our own decisions about our futures, when and if we wish to start a family, when and if we carry a pregnancy to term. Um, at this point, the thing that we need to do in the most immediate sense is to overturn our criminal abortion ban. It predates um, the Civil War. It predates any woman serving in office. It predates women gaining the right to vote. 1849, that law's been on the books for... 174 years, I guess it is now. Um, it's time to change that. Um, it hasn't been enforced. Obviously, Roe v. Wade um, certainly stood in the way of that. It is questionable whether it could even be enforced at this point. But as we await court decisions on that, abortion has become unavailable in the state of Wisconsin. This means that patients who face either unplanned or untenable pregnancies, planned pregnancies where something went horribly wrong, don't have an option in our state and are forced to, 
forced to travel out of state to get that care. Um, that's unacceptable. The first thing we need to do is to restore Roe here in Wisconsin, bring us back, and this is what our bill would do. Our bill would bring us back to exactly where we were back in June of last year before Roe v. Wade was overturned. Now, Republicans have made it clear that they're not going to consider your bill. They're not going to pass that. So the question is, would you be willing to consider anything that would adjust the current abortion ban, considering they've already said that they're not going to sign off on a repeal of the abortion ban? Well, as I said, we cannot truly be free to make our own reproductive health care decisions unless we reverse this ban. The governor has made it clear that he will sign nothing short of, re of reversing the ban. And frankly, that's not a lot to ask. We have numerous abortion restrictions on the books. Abortion is heavily regu abortion was heavily regulated um, even before the Dobbs decision in June. Our bill would simply take us back to exactly where we were in June when the Supreme Court ruled to overturn Roe v. Wade and it would restore our freedom to make our own reproductive health care choices and our own choices about our futures. The other topic this week has been about some criminal laws that would make it a little bit tougher on criminals for various things. One of the things that's been talked about here and coming up in the next election is going to be a proposal that would make it more difficult to post cash bail for violent criminals. You were one of a dozen Democrats, I believe, that signed off on this proposal. Why did you agree to it? Sure. So I believe that our system is flawed, that our cash bail system is not perfect, and that we do need to make reform and change to it. That said, I also do believe that judges should be able to take into consideration, consideration risk to the community when deciding um, how to handle where individuals go pre-trial. Um, we are in a country where you are innocent till proven guilty, but we have to be able to assess risk to the community based on an individual's um, past behavior or threat level. And I voted for that. I, I voted to put that amendment to the voters for that reason. It didn't come without a little bit of heartburn, though, because I do acknowledge that our system is fundamentally flawed, that a cash bail system does not treat all people equally, that those who cannot afford a higher cash bail, um, have a different level of justice than those who can, and that's a problem. And I will continue working to reform our system to make it fairer and more equitable at the same time as I work to make our communities or to ensure that our communities are safe. That was going to be my next question. Do you agree with some of your Democratic colleagues that cash bail can lead to more inequity as far as who can afford to post that bail? Absolutely. And, you know, I saw it. I worked in the homeless shelter system, and I saw it on a smaller scale, even with things like parking tickets and folks who would get parking tickets. And for me, if I got a parking ticket, I would just pay it. When some of the clients that I worked with would get parking tickets, they couldn't afford to pay it. It would actually result in the revocation of driver's license, which could then result in their losing their job, perhaps their car being impounded. There was a whole slew of things that could happen down the road. And that's a small example. It's not on the level of cash bail, but it, it shows that inequity. It's a, it's a small demonstration of how unequal a system that depends upon ability to pay is. So I do think we need to change the system. Um, and I'm committed to continuing to do that. Certainly there are many of my colleagues and I who have been working to do that for a number of years and we will continue to do so. All right, Representative Subek, thank you so much for the time here this week. Great, thank you so much for having me.